2.5 gig networking, Wi-Fi 6E, a controller that does more than just be a controller. These were all things that were missing from my Omada setup in my home lab. Till now. I'm a big fan of the Omada lineup and I've done a video on the hardware I run in my lab, which I dubbed the short stack. Works great and is extremely affordable, but it had two issues with it. One is that the entire stack is limited to one gig and it has no Wi-Fi 6E. Now, these aren't really issues and more like things that could possibly be upgraded. So that means I need it, you know? So TV-Link reached out and was all like, hey kid, we got some networking gear, uh, you want some? And of course, I'm not gonna turn that down. So here we have it, three new pieces of hardware that will essentially replace my Omada short stack, giving me all the upgrades I need. And what do we call this one, daddy? First thing we have is an upgraded controller, except that it isn't just a controller. This is the ER7212PC, which is a three-in-one device acting as a controller, switch, and a router. The single device replaces most of the short stack, and it's got 10 one gig RJ45 ports, two SFP ports. Both of the SFP ports are WAN-LAN combo ports. One of the RJ45 is WAN-LAN combo, and one is dedicated WAN. So you essentially could hook up four WANs to this device with your Scrooge McDuck ass. Oh, and the other eight RJ45 ports on here are PoE Plus enabled with 110 watts of power to hook up all your PoE goodies. Well, not all of them. You'll see in a bit. We've got a dual core CPU with one gigabyte of DDR3, so obviously not very powerful. I'm wondering if that's contributing to the delay I've experienced in the web UI when using this device. I noticed it does feel a bit slower than my dedicated controller. Maybe this is something that can be fixed in a firmware update. In terms of performance though, it does what you'd expect. I was able to power some PoE cameras and certain access points with no issues and hardwired devices were getting the full one gig speeds. Neat. In this video, I'm not really gonna touch on the software side too much. Experience is essentially the same as other Omana hardware, so go check out one of my other videos if you'd like to indulge. Oh yeah, and this guy costs $269. Honestly, still a solid price as I'd expect from Omada. Think about it, if you have a smaller setup, you could buy this single device and it would be the entire heart of your system. However, it is missing something. There's no 2.5 gig networking. If you don't need 2.5 gig networking, then cool, less stuff you have to buy, but I love me some 2.5 gig, so here we go. We have the TL-SG3210XHP, a device that comes with not only eight 2.5 gig PoE Plus ports, but also two 10 gig SFP Plus ports. This is the switch I've been wanting to add to my Omada setup for a while. It's not just because Wi-Fi 6E is so freaking fast, but mostly because 2.5 gig is becoming more and more popular on desktops and other hardwired devices. Here we get a total of 240 watts of total power for PoE, so again, enough to power some cameras and access points. You get all the expected features out of a layer two, layer three switch, not really sure how they're defining this one, like link aggregation, QoS, VLANs, flow control, and all kinds of stuff. Note that this is the first Omada device that I've used that is actively cooled. I wouldn't say the fan is loud, but it's not really something you'd want to have on your desk. Plus, this is designed to sit in a rack anyway. Here, just listen for yourself. All right, so this is my normal speaking voice right above the switch, which has its fan going at about the idle speed, which isn't as bad as startup, but yeah, the mic's about a foot away. What do you think? If that was soothing to you or made you go six to midnight, then maybe you do want it on your desk, but for the rest of us, this is gonna go in the rack. At a price of $400, it's not cheap by any means. For this device, I would have liked to see Omada come in a bit more aggressively at $300 or maybe $350. Don't get me wrong, I still think $400 is perfectly acceptable, but not quite the home run that I expect out of the Omada line. It would be competing with what I think is the best 10 gig switch on the market right now, and that is the Unify Flex XG, which is a four port 10 gigabit switch for only $300. So 
only time will tell. For the third and final piece of hardware, we've got an absolute monster of an access point. I mean, look at this freaking thing. It is a chungus boy. This is the EAP 690E HD quad band Wi-Fi 6 access point with a total throughput of 11 gigabits per second. For $500, you get a six gigahertz band for your Wi-Fi 6E at 4.8 gigabits per second, two five gigahertz bands each at 2.4 gigabits per second, and a 2.4 gigahertz band at 1.2 gigabits per second. God damn, that is some throughput. But I know what you guys care about. You want that juicy Wi-Fi 6E. Well, you do get 4.8 gigabits of speed on that six gigahertz band. It's only if you somehow find a 4x4 6E client, which I don't think exists. Every 6E client that I've seen is 2x2, two two, which is still plenty fast at 2.4 gigabits per second. I snagged an Intel AX210 card, threw it in one of my desktops, and tested the speeds by running iPerf between that and another desktop connected directly to the switch via a 2.5 gigabit connection. And holy moly, this thing is fast. I was getting just around two gigabits per second in my test, which is now the fastest Wi-Fi device I've ever personally used. I mean, damn, two gigabits per second across Wi-Fi, that's actually nuts. And it has a lot of bandwidth available back to your switch considering it has a full fat 10 gig RJ45 port. This thing definitely needs to find a permanent spot in my lab. All right. Let's calm down for a bit though. Remember when I said this? With 110 watts of power to hook up all your PoE goodies. Well, not all of them. Well, you can technically power this access point with PoE Plus, but you don't get the six gigahertz channel as that will require more power. I'm assuming with a PoE Plus Plus switch, you'll be fine, but with my current setup here, I have to plug it in using the power adapter if I want to use Wi-Fi 6E. Well, this isn't any fault of TP-Link. I mean, those are the power requirements. I find it odd that with what I would consider their top tier switch, you can't even power their top tier access point. Again, it's not like it won't work or anything, but I can see people ordering this setup, running the cable, mounting the access point, only to find out that if they want to use the access point to its full potential, they now have to run AC power to it or buy a PoE++ injector. At the time of making this video, there's only one switch in the Omada line that is PoE++ enabled, and that's a six port 10 gigabit switch that will run you $550. With all that said though, this dude is still an absolute monster and will give you the fastest Wi-Fi speeds you can get right now. All right, overall, what are my thoughts on the new setup? While it is super fast and will integrate seamlessly into your Omada ecosystem, it is quite expensive. For these three devices, you will be paying $1,200. While $1,200 is a lot of money, you are getting a good bit for it with 10 one gigabit ports, eight 2.5 gig ports, two 10 gig ports, 360 watts of PoE+, quad band Wi-Fi with Wi-Fi 6E, an Amata controller, and a full router firewall. Whether or not I can recommend this depends entirely on what you already have and what your needs are. If you aren't in the Amata ecosystem yet, then I can 100% recommend the three-in-one controller. $269, this is an awesome device. If you already have some Amata hardware like the short stack and you're looking to up your game to 2.5, 10 gig, or Wi-Fi 6E, then you'll have a decision to make. Is $900 worth it for that upgrade? I mean, for you, maybe. I think $400 for this switch is much easier to justify than dropping $500 for the Wi-Fi 6E. Again, that's just me. I currently don't have that many Wi-Fi 6E clients anyway, so it's a bit easier of a choice. Now, all the devices we covered are linked down in the description below if you wanna do your own research and decide for yourself. I don't think you'll be disappointed at all in the slightest with this setup. Just comes down to if your pockets are deep enough, but that's all I have for this one. If you liked it, then drop a like. If you like content like this, then consider subscribing. I wanna give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my PoE++ injector. That gives me all the power and support I need to make content for the rest of the world. You guys are the goats. 
If you're still watching, I appreciate it. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next one.